the only other announcement I had before I do the call of worship is the uh, there will be a walk-in clinic uh, tomorrow at the uh, town hall in the downstairs of the courtroom from noon to 7 p.m. for anyone who needs the COVID vaccine. So you don't need to make an appointment. You can if you want. The information is on the town's website. And it's being organized through the Ulster County Health Department. And uh, it's the Moderna vaccine. I think there's 200 vaccines available. So I know most of the people here have already had have been vaccinated, but uh, if you know someone who hasn't, just spread the word, please. So it's tomorrow from noon to 7. At, at the town hall, you said? Yeah, at the town court. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, town court. Town, basically, the Milton Elementary School right there in the museum. <laughs> Please join or call the worship. <clears throat> Answer us when we call, O oh God. Be gracious to us and hear our prayer. When we are in distress, you make space for us. You put gladness in our hearts as with divine feast. When we are disturbed, may we not sin, but ponder things in our beds and be silent. We will, not, we will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make us lie down in safety. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks that you often reveal yourself to be different from our expectations. When we long for the love we have known in the past, our eyes are dimmed to the beauty you reveal to us now. As your first followers struggled to see how a suffering Savior could be the Messiah, we strain to recognize you still today. Come, Spirit. Make yourself known in the study of Scripture, in our songs of praise, and especially in the grace and love we offer one another. Make yourself known in every friend we have yet to meet in your good and blessed name. Amen. And as a reminder of the way that we extend the passing of the peace, um, we, we make a circle, may the peace of our Lord and the symbol of the crucified Lord be with you. So let's do that. May the peace of our Lord be First lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power of piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though we had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer give to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this, made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your nerve rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had told to all prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm is from the fourth psalm. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But 
but now that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself, the Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are those who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace for you, O oh Lord, alone. Make me lie down in safety. This also is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third lesson is from John 1, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know this is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that He was revealed to take away sins, and in Him there is no sin. No, no one who abides in Him sins. No one who sins has either seen Him or known Him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as He is righteous. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Not only does it seem to me that bodily experience is important, but it seems to me that it seems to Scripture that bodily experience is important. So today we have in our, in our short psalm, one of these short little psalms, we have we begin with longing and near despair. How long? Oh, might we see some good? These are abstract images. Time, how long? Good. But the psalmist brings us back to the body. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. Now, in spite of the weather on Friday, we are entering into the season of days getting longer and light returning to the northern hemisphere. And I don't know about you, but I've spent many moments outside this spring looking up and just feeling the light on my face. There's the warmth of the sun, too, but even through closed eyes, we know when light is shining on our faces. And the psalmist tells us that that image, that feeling in our bodies of light on the face, is how we might begin to think about walking in God's grace. It is like walking with the light perpetually shining on us. And gladness. The psalm says that God puts gladness in our hearts. Again, a feeling we know about, but the psalmist brings it back to the body. More than when grain and wine abound. Now, if you'll indulge me a little bit. Fun fact, the translation of this psalm that I'm more familiar with says, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. And I just could not let that go uninvestigated. So I look it up. And the Hebrew scriptures have grain and wine. And the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures that was made between the 3rd and the 1st century BC has grain and wine and oil. So some Greek translator added the oil into this psalm. And I gotta admit, I have some sympathy for that Greek translator because oil, like grain and wine, is food for your bodies. But also, I think the desert people and those of us coming out of a long, artificially heated winter know that oil on the outside of the body is also important. And I like the idea that some second century Greek understood the value of a good moisturizer. <laughs> but this comparison of the sensory bodily experience of God to light or fullness or skin care, this experience gives depth to our understanding of God's grace. And it gives us an experience that most of us have had in our bodies to hang that feeling on. And then a letter of John today. We hear today from the third chapter, but we may recall that the letter of John begins, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. Heard, seen, looked at, touched. The author of John is clearly asking us to believe his authority based on his bodily lived experience, his own experience of the divine. And then today's passage continues, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we have, what we will be, has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Now, there's one word that re recurs twice in this passage, revealed. And it comes from the verb banaro'o, to make manifest. And that fun sound might sound familiar from epiphany, which is when something is revealed. And, you know, that thing from research, it got me again, because I had to go back to find out where does that come from. And it comes from an older verb that means to bring to light. And that turn comes from an older word that just means to shine. And now we're back to the face of God shining upon us. All the way back to the chain of meaning of this word from which we get epiphany and we get theophany. It's all about this bodily lived experience of seeing and light and revealing. And that's what Dr. John is bringing us. When Jesus is again revealed, when Jesus is brought to light before us, when Jesus is shown to us in the light, then we will see him. We will see him because revealing is light bringing. As John also writes elsewhere, God is light. God is false, like phosphorus. God shines. And this brings us, of course, to Luke and to these disciples, so frightened that Jesus has come among them again. 
that Jesus is the one who suggests that he thinks that, that, that they think that he's a ghost. And I always picture the scene of Jesus kind of rolling his eyes like, what do I have to do here, people? Not a ghost. Do you have some fish? Will that do it? So Jesus asks for a piece of fish to prove his corporeality, to prove he is in his body. Now there were a lot of schools, like several schools of early Christian thought that believed that Jesus never had a body. That the incarnation was an illusion and that God speaking through Jesus was no more solid than God who spoke through a pillar of cloud. As if that mystery of the incarnation just wasn't a thing. And if there were people who thought that about Jesus' earthly ministry before the crucifixion, before the resurrection, then how many more must there have been who believed that about his resurrected body? Including, it seems, at this time in Luke, his own disciples. Now, last week we heard about Thomas, that deeply embodied Thomas who don't, doesn't believe anything that he doesn't experience in his body. Thomas needed to believe in his body, and here we have Jesus proving with his body that he had a body. Spending time with both the group of disciples in Luke and with Thomas and John, Jesus knows, and perhaps he knows for the very reason of having been embodied, that sometimes we need to know things in and with our bodies before we really know them. We count on our fingers when we're unsure of a number. I kid you not, I did that two days ago because I had to confirm for myself that my next high school reunion was the 30th. And we practice things. We practice dance and driving and art and sports until we achieve muscle memory. That's a memory that lives in our bodies that hardly requires our minds to unlock it at all. As babies, we waste away if we are not touched enough. The tiniest scent, even through a mask maybe, brings a world of memory associated with that scent, Easter bunnies. The first chord of a beloved song brings the entire song at once. And the situations where we heard it and the people we heard it with, we remember these things in our bodies. We experience knowledge in our bodies as much as in our minds, and we believe with our bodies as much as with our hearts. The apostles bore witness to what they had seen and heard and touched and felt, and so do we. What we see and hear and touch and feel is different, but we too get to have our direct experience with God. So on the one hand, I think that's, that that is why we have to say experience out loud. We have to say bodily experience out loud because sometimes our experiences with God feel like a taboo subject. And it can be really hard to talk about these direct experiences and yet, I think that's why so many of us are here, why we come back, and why we keep coming back, even when it's hard. Because of some one moment in time, or repeated moment in time, where God has in some way said to each of us, I am here with you. And here we are, deep in the midst of Easter tide, hopefully coming to the end of COVID tide. And in some limited way, again, we begin to be able to celebrate with our bodies. Zoom life turns out not to be the only life that's left to us. And it's been a long and lonely year for a lot of bodies. But we need that. We need that bodily experience. I am here with you this weekend, now that vaccines made it possible, because it was important to bring my body to celebrate with my mother's body and my sister's body in the same room to celebrate her 75th birthday, to hug again. And in some way, it was important that we did that celebration in the very same room where her grandfather, my great-grandfather, celebrated his 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, that's, this is her 50th wedding anniversary too, wasn't it? Um, we do these things, bringing bodies together for celebration, because it's who we are as embodied people. And we bring ourselves together for mourning as well. And this year has seen so many disembodied acts of mourning, funerals that we couldn't hold, gatherings we couldn't come together for. <coughs> and we have missed those physical acts of consolation that come with them. But today, for us who are here, we 
can celebrate that we are alive, that we are embodied, that we can bring our bodies into this room, and we can celebrate that every single one of our bodies was made in the image of God, who himself also had a walking, talking, fish-eating body. Give thanks for the food that nourishes your God image body. Feel the light of Christ on your face and rejoice. Amen. And let us pray. Most loving God, as we ask you to use each of us for your purposes, we pray for a renewal of the resources of our lives. Wherever some are sad, bring comfort. Where there is illness, bring healing. If there are anxious souls, bring serenity. And should there be hard decisions to make, bring guidance. Where some may feel afraid, bring courage. 
And if any among us feel beset with doubts, strengthen the core of faith within us. Then may we, fortified by your love and guided by your wisdom, express something of your spirit in all the interweaving activities of this new day, of this new week, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We give thanks, O oh God, for the life of Liz's mother, for all in her that was good and patient and kind. We rejoice that for her, her pain and suffering has ended, and she has now been received by you into your eternal realm. We pray that your peace that passes understanding be poured out over Liz and her sister and brother in their time of loss. Oh God, we know that you are keeping vigil on the banks of the Hudson River, that you have surrounded Rose Marie with your calming presence. And may that extend to body and to health as well. Lord of all health, you are the source of our life and our fulfillment in death. Be for Ricky now comfort in the midst of pain and strength to transform weakness and light to brighten this difficult time. By your power, great God, our Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave new hope to the hopeless, and we have seen that hopefulness in Emma and the child she carries. We give you thanks, O oh God, that her face is turned toward Marlboro, and we pray, O oh Lord, that she soon may come home. We pray for all those who find themselves away from home, but in places of caregiving. We pray for Pat, for Bill, for Judy, for Jessica. Oh God, may their caregivers carry our hearts in all that they say and do. We offer all these prayers, O oh God, in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are forgiven and we are loved.